Can you remember a time where you first began to understand creativity was important to you? I think that that specific experience has probably only happened kind of recently in the fact that I haven't, sometimes I haven't been doing it and then I do it and then I'm reminded of how good it is for me. But I guess in terms of like when I kind of first discovered being creative, I guess it was when I did photography at A level in school. And what did that start to kind of unlock for you? Well, I mean, I think I've always been, I think I'd always been quite imaginative anyway, very imaginative. My outlet was drama. I liked acting. And yeah, so I, that was what I kind of did. And I, d- I didn't have a very um, uh, supportive art teacher. And my art teacher at school actually said to me that I'd never be an artist because I couldn't draw very well. Um, so I didn't take art for GCSE. I did drama instead. And then a, f- a good friend of mine, uh, she was going to go and do photography instead at A-level. And I didn't want to be potentially on my own. So I discovered my love of photography and I liked the immediacy of photography, I think. It kind of, rather than having to sort of painstakingly draw for hours and hours and hours um, before you saw something, with digital photography, it was instant. And I really liked that. I liked the quickness of it, I think, and that I could work quickly and that I could see what I did and didn't like immediately and work it and work it and work it. It kind of really played to that part of me that works quite quickly. What was the subject matter that you were focusing on when you kind of first started? When I first out? started, it was all about the, the self. It was all about me. It became a very um, autobiographical practice. Um, I was a very unhappy teenager. I was very badly bullied in school. Um, and a lot of it had to do with my gender presentation. And, and so the clothes that I wore and my behaviour and the fact that I was the only out queer male um at school so i i was targeted quite a lot for all of that so a lot of my photographic interests were about me that initial start of those self portraits using that as a way to kind of self prescribe or portray yourself in certain ways was that an exploration of different character and different appearance as well I think for me, that experience of gender, I suppose, in that way, my awareness to that was being brought to the surface as I was also experiencing myself and my sexuality. Also, a lot of my early experiences with um, men, they would often always use kind of um, adjectives that, you know, would be generally used for the women like beautiful, pretty. I kind of existed in this weird kind of world that was then perpetuated by the people that I was kind of seeing romantically. And then I I was therefore just became really interested in this idea that by just like putting on a bracelet or or like or putting on one piece of clothing, people could could not understand what genitalia I had. And I, I became very kind of fixated on that idea and how weird that was. And I found it really silly. And then I didn't understand the difference between sex and gender anyway. So so I started to then explore that in in um in photographic form. And I became really interested in, okay, well, how much do I need to put on to look a certain way? You know? Do I need to put on a dress? Do I need to put on a wig? Do I need to put on makeup? But I don't wear a wig. Do I, you know? I was really interested in the nuances of what makes the shift in people to perceive me in a certain way? In a way, you could say that was a, basically a form of research. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was a, it was anthropological research without me even realizing it. At, in that sense, I was interested in people's perception of me, and I was exploring that through photographs and using myself as the vessel for that. And how did that impact how you then present yourself or how you think? Because I feel like this idea of creating for no reason, Mm. those kind of formative moments when you're beginning to really have some quite deep thoughts and explore topics which are huge Mm. through creativity without Mm. really knowing it, then impact 
you in ways that maybe you don't know at the time, but maybe you know now. Mm. Did that have a springboard effect on you in the future? Well, I mean, I suppose, I suppose the the hard fact is that you're never creating um, for for nothing. It just might be that later on you under you realise, like I have just done now, <laughs> that actually um, it is you know your the creative process is a kind of access to the subconscious um, in that sense. So I was probably working through things that I didn't have a language for, but I was giving voice to it through images, you know, as art, you know, visual communication rather than, than um, speaking it or writing it or whatever. And I remember in those early stages, seeing that carrying on, that exploration, sorry, carrying on into the work that I did at uh, Hereford College of Arts and then um, carrying that then into my BA, that it sort of, it became more refined and more sort of expansive, I guess, and more like uh, experimental because I was interested in, in, in all those things like gender and presentation that kind of naturally formed the shift into an interest in fashion photography and editorial. And because I was so used to using myself, I just kind of continued using myself, but just kind of then started to become interested in in Nick Knight and Tim Walker and, you know, and Annie Leibovitz. And, um, well, it's not, I feel like it's not a surprise that you would do that considering the storytelling aspect of what you want yeah. to achieve and how you gravitated towards maybe something which was, again, very expressive. Like it, it's interesting how you piecing together these interests and these experiences and how you then see that manifesting other people's work and finding inspiration from that as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was a kind of, it was a very natural progression. Uh, and then I had a, a lecturer that criticized me for exploring gender and in more of a sort of fashion context that was definitely where I was kind of going down and creating these kinds of worlds I suppose and uh, he said to me that it was it was boring and that he'd seen it you know I I kind of had done that so maybe I kind of explore something else and so I did and I kind of just stopped doing all of that autobiographical kind of portraiture um he just kind of put a stop to it and now I only really take the odd self-portrait you know it's it's quite unusual now that I, I use myself as, as a subject. So it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's been a massive shift in that sense. 